Hi everyone, uh, hola, ¿cómo están? Espero que hayan disfrutado la piñata <laughs> y que canten la canción todo el día. Uh, well, my name is Yvonne and I am the community manager of the DOJ, the directory of Open Access Journals, and I'm also an associate professor at the uh, Universidad Autónoma Metropolitana in Lerma. So today I'm going to uh, talk about data journals, but uh, to, before starting, I want to just share with you one of uh, or the main motivation uh, to talk about this topic and is trust in science and, and what I think it's a crisis in trust in science. And um, so I uh, finished my dissertation about uh, one of the biggest journals we have in the landscape, in the open access landscape, which is PLOS One. And uh, part of my data were about, uh, you know, the processes of um, editing and publishing a journal. And I found like, this is a really global crisis, the trust in science and a couple of examples are here. Oh. Uh, probably, you know, Retraction Watch, uh, you know, this website when um, uh, people can report the articles or journals or, you know, editorial board members, etc. cetera, uh, that are um, misbehaving in, uh, in terms of the publishing system. So uh, if you look at the website, you can see that there are many, many cases of uh, faking data or uh, inventing data and this kind of things. And many uh, articles that are uh, that uh, or authors who have uh, misbehaved have retract, retracted their articles or the journal detract, retracts their articles. And also there's, there was a huge scandal last year about this researcher in Spain who was publishing 170 something articles per year or like every 40 hours or something like that. So why I am talking about this? Because one of the solutions and the strategies that I think the community, uh, the academic community has uh, found to fight these behave misbehaviors is data journals. And I want to know if you know what is a data journal, but also if you have written a data paper, have you like raise your hand if you know what a data journal is? Okay. And have you uh, authored a data paper? Okay, so this is for you. <laughs> what are data journals and data papers? So data papers are these uh, types of manuscripts that describe, essentially describe uh, data sets and uh, how the data were collected, organized, uh, um, marked up, and et cetera. And uh, the goal and the main purpose of, of these uh, articles is to show the community and, and to be transparent about the data collection and the data uh, the data that people, you know, collect for research. So um, per perhaps you haven't heard about them or written any manuscript because they are very scarce and there are not many data journals in the world. I, I'm going to show some some numbers. Uh, but first of all, this I think this figure illustrates very well what a data journal is, what a data paper is, and how it is how they can be connected with repositories and other. Uh, spaces where we deposit um, data. So if you can see a data journal is a journal that publishes papers, a data paper that has, you know, the regular things that we know, the metadata and, and identifier content, etc. And this data paper is about data sets that are usually deposited in a, in a repository, like an institutional repository and like, oh, you know, like a discipline repository, etc. And usually the data are and should be open in order to be uh, also um, published in a data journal. So it is very well, I think, again, this figure illustrates how we can interconnect systems and make them interoperable in terms of uh, the structure of the data and also the uh, policies in an editorial board or in a, in a journal in general. So uh, I mixed some Spanish. Uh, but this is um, a quote uh, about the criteria that 
usually data journals uh, take into account when uh, evaluating a data paper. First of all, the data papers are, uh, you know, about data sets, as I said, with a high percentage of reuse. So it is, of course, one of the main goals of making data available, right? That others can use them. So uh, data papers and data journals are, uh, they make sure that this structure um, is uh, compatible and that people can use them. That's why um, some of the, uh, one of the criterion also is to use uh, open licensing, like um, uh, free copyright or like, you know, like uh, Creative Commons licenses, this type of things, because it allows uh, users to redistribute, copy, and so on. So uh, again, the data sets should be uh, open access and like available without any barriers, like economic barriers or technical barriers. And also uh, the data journals are not very different from other journals. So they conduct a peer review process and the peer review, the peer review process, of course, has uh, some differences, right? Because it's not much about the results or the interpretation or the discussion, but about the data set and how it was collected and how it, it was structured and so on. And also, you know, uh, having a DOI and preservation that is very important for data journals and, uh, and the frequency of publication should be as soon as possible because that's the relevance of uh, data papers and data journals. There are, mm, uh, I found this list uh, of data journals and these people collected the data about 135 journals. The thing is that these are the types of, the types of uh, one of the um, most uh, well-known data journals. And as you can see, I think it's biased. Maybe it's my, uh, my view, but uh, we don't have many jour data journals from independent publishers or like academic-led publishers. If you can see, these journals are published by the most uh, traditional corporate publishing um, organizations like, you know, Elsevier, uh, Wiley, Ubiquitu, um, um, Copernicus, this kind of uh, publishers. So um, it's, I think, one of the things that are important to take into account if you want to uh, give your data to some journals that charge you a lot of money and sell your uh, information. Well, but that's <laughs> a footnote. <laughs> um, well, again, this is a list of data journals. You can see uh, um, in this list what are the main countries and publishers that publish these journals. I didn't and I couldn't find and I haven't found any Latin American data journal or a journal that is a data journal that is not in English. So if you know some, please share, because it, I think it's important to make them visible if they exist. If not, this is also an invitation for you guys, especially if you are in academia, but also if you are in other organizations to maybe think about starting and running a data journal. So, but again, coming back to the question, the initial concern about trust, uh, we know, and probably you are very familiar with this phenomenon of the so-called predatory journals. So, and uh, again, uh, with data and with data journals, it's also a concern and a problem in some uh, communities. So this, uh, there, are, there are many, many journals in the world, and every day, you know, you you pick you you uh, gather a rock, and it, under the rock there are more journals, and that you receive more emails saying, "Please review for this journal," or like, "Please submit your manuscript." You or are are familiar with this phenomenon? So uh, how can we make sure that the journal is trusted or that the journal is, you know, ethically driven and ethically run? Well, the answer is, I think, very simple and complicated at the same time, but uh, trust in databases. So databases, uh, journal databases, I think, and we have many examples. I'm going to talk about this example, the directory of open access journals. If you don't know it, I'm going to explain a little bit what we do and how we do this uh, with data journals and other journals. So use support and, uh, you know, uh, share these databases like uh, DOJ, I'm going to talk about it, as I said, but also Cielo and Latindex, and I'm uh, citing these examples because, it, you know, it's uh, in Latin America, we are a region 
a pioneer region in terms of that data and in terms of journal publishing. And um, yeah, going back to uh, the point to the about the directory of open access journals, I'm, I'm, uh, I hope you know it, but we are a database, it's a unique directory or list of journals. We have more than 20,000 journals. All of them are open access. And by the way, another footnote, very quick. Um, open access doesn't mean paying for making your manuscript available for the public. It's not a synonym. So we have many journals in the database that are not APC based, article processing charges based. So they don't charge anything to the author and anything to the readers. So um, we are also a gold standard in terms of criteria, like evaluation criteria. We have a list of criteria um, to evaluate the journals and to make sure that they are trusted, that they um, uh, comply with international standards in terms of, for instance, governance and peer review, of course. So we have a list that you can uh, check out in the uh, website. And we provide metadata about these 20,000 journals uh, to free for, for anyone. We have uh, not a, a short uh, history. We have 20 years um, uh, working on open access and evaluation of journals to make sure that uh, we provide the world with a list um, that reflects how science is produced in the world. So we have 80 countries represented, one, 80 languages, sorry, 134 countries. So we are, we are a very comprehensive database and many of the journals that you don't, the map, um, we cover pretty much the whole world and we have a gap in Africa and we are working on that actually pre, uh, nowadays. And this, I want to just very quickly mention this uh, figure that shows you how comprehensive is the DOAJ and how you can find many, many journals that are not in the traditional and, by the way, very expensive databases like Scopus and Web of Science. As you can see, we are one of our goals, again, is to show that science is well done everywhere and, you know, with high quality and so on. And that's why um, we, we uh, share all the information uh, to the world. Well, we are a very small organization, but increasingly, uh, or like increasing in terms of the people who join and volunteer for us. Um, more than 100 volunteers nowadays review applications. People are, and one of them is here, Julio. Um, and uh, we, they are professionals in librarianship and so on, who help us review these journals and to help us help the editors to improve their practices in terms of quality and transparency. This is uh, like our workflow, uh, very, very broadly. Uh, people, the editor, the publisher sent an application. We have initial checks, and then we have an independent review by the editorial team and the volunteers. We check it manually. We have humans checking the, the applications. We are planning to automate some of the processes, but still we check the website, we read the website and we uh, look at the practices because we are not very focused on um, um, indicators or like, you know, impact. we are anti-impact factors somehow. Uh, and because we want to show the world the practices instead of, you know, the citations. Citations are okay and are useful, but we are more concerned about helping the journals, like data journals, especially for uh, because they are different, like special type of journals to serve their communities better. Um, we are, um, at our service uh, is discoverable and, and uh, it is used in many libraries in many institutions. And this is just a very quickly, uh, you know, one of the, uh, one is a scheme that we created to show the advantages of being indexed in the DOAJ. So it's not only about uh, discoverability or visibility, but also increasing opportunity to, opportunities of grants. For instance, there are some um, uh, funders that requires you to, to um, publish in open access, right? And you probably, if you don't know the DOJ, you go to the, the same journals that charge you $3,000 or more, or five or 11,000 journals like, uh, dollars like um, uh, computational neuroscience, I think it's the journal. Um, so 
you know, and um, that if you are not in a very, very, very poor country, you don't have discounts, right? So um, we have many projects, but I want to highlight the one uh, here, Think Check Submit. It's a tool that um, we created to help uh, the community and to evaluate yourself, the journal that you are, you know, using to do your research or thinking about publishing in. And I think for data journals, this is very useful because again, it gives you a list, it's a checklist of uh, the things that you have to take into consideration. For instance, if it, it is a data journal, how they make sure that, you know, you, you, um, your rights are preserved or that they have preservation policies and so on. So I think uh, I invite you all to uh, uh, check the tool and we have other tools. And very quickly, we recently launched the open access toolkit. Uh, the journals toolkit and this is a, a, especially for people who are planning to uh, start a new journal but also if you work in a journal it's a, it's a list of things that you may take into consideration if you can wanted to increase quality to be more transparent and so on and very quickly um, to conclude I am uh, I did a quick search in our database and we have uh, just with the title um, with the word data, we have 53 journals and uh, some of them are in data journals are not, many of them are not only data papers, they, they publish also traditional papers, but it's, it is interesting to see how they are different, right? Like the types of paper that you can write and they, many of them gave, give you a very clear guidelines. So to finish, I just want to invite you to publish data papers. And most important, importantly, journals are not made by themselves. Like ma it's not magic. It's people who are involved there. So I invite you also to join um, initiatives like your data journals as reviewer, as an editor and so on. And that's it. Thank you. You, you want to? Uh, th thank you so much for that talk. Um, I was wondering if DOAJ had any plans to add a metadata attribute to specifically search for data journals or journals that accept data papers. Um, as a data librarian, I often find it hard to find these. And, I, I, you know, a keyword search ends up pulling up a lot of journals that are, you know, within like the field of data science or... Um, may still be, you know, accepting more traditional research articles rather than data papers. Yeah, that's a good question. And it's complicated because we have many types of journals. Uh, for instance, we accept uh, like non-traditional journals. I One of the examples is, of course, data journals, but also student run journals and like other types of journals that are not, uh, again, traditionally accepted or included in other databases. So we are in the process of restructuring our um, tags and our metadata. Uh, we, ha we had a consultation recently and people are, you know, expressed these concerns. So I cannot answer now because we are in the process, but yeah, it's something that we are uh, considering. Yeah. It is Thank you. Well, I, I wish, well, I, I want to ask you about if you know the difference between um, a data set that has been curated or very well curated and the uh, um, um, publish uh, papers, uh, data papers, because uh, data sets that are have been curated are they have all the all these methodology described and and all the that the the steps that the the researchers had been through so i want to know if you know a little bit ab about this yeah that's a good question so the, i think the main difference is that uh, data papers communicate a little bit more than the data set itself so the data set data set itself as you mentioned should have its own methodology and description there but the uh, data papers usually have more information about how like the research, the context of the research without being a traditional that, um, paper, research paper. 
So they have more information about the context of the research and also um, perhaps the results, but it is not focused on the results. Whereas the data set has only the, the data and maybe the descriptors or description of the data set. So it is a short communication. It's a type of paper that is, they are short because again, it's not focused on the whole uh, research, but only the data. And uh, I think it's more like the description of the data set, uh, the data set in the data paper is more thorough. It's more, you know, in depth. Uh -huh. Voy a hacer la pregunta en español, la puedes contestar en inglés. Eh, muchos de los investigadores no quieren publicar sus datos debido a la situación de los derechos de las bases de datos. El marco común europeo y México tiene una legislación muy generis, muy rara, eh, pero en general las bases de datos eh, no son obras originales o no son infundidas. Y cuando eh, proponemos las, las creative nos comentan que consideran que no son sobre todo por el uso comercial que puede tener la inteligencia de los datos. ¿Han tenido alguna discusión sobre qué hacer con la licencia? ¿Cómo construir licencias para respetar mejor eh, pues, la, la soberanía de los datos? ¿Investigación? Sí, bueno, esa es una pregunta también difícil porque eh, en realidad... Yo considero, y en DOAG hemos tenido muchas preocupaciones al respecto de las licencias, y sobre todo porque se utilizan a veces sin conocimiento y sin eh, entender el contexto de la licencia, a veces son incompatibles con las legislaciones de los países, en fin. Yo soy pro Creative Commons, o sea, y creo que es una herramienta muy útil, pero a la vez creo que está creando problemas y, y como desconocimiento o malinformación que es muy difícil combatir desde las revistas, al menos, ¿no? O desde las bases de datos como DOAG. Pero nosotros hemos hecho esfuerzos y tenemos como un par de posts en nuestro blog sobre como muy para guiar a los editores así paso a paso. Mira, esta licencia se usa así, significa esto, así. Puede pasar tal cosa si la usas. Puede, o sea, tenemos como una guía que es un esfuerzo pequeño porque no ha sido suficiente, sinceramente. O sea, nosotros lo hacemos y, y nosotros guiamos a los editores en términos de, de cómo, por ejemplo, puede ser confuso en su página, en fin. Eso para las licencias Creative Commons. Eh, y con respecto, bueno, yo he tenido como charlas con gente de Creative Commons y ellos mismos están también en este dilema de, bueno, ¿seguimos promoviendo la CC BY o no? Porque al principio era claro, todos, por favor, que usen los datos porque, o las, los objetos, ¿no? Para que sea un conocimiento más libre, etcétera. Y hoy en día, precisamente, el tema de las inteligencias les está haciendo volver a pensar en, el, en la cuestión de sin uso comercial, ¿no? Que es la principal preocupación. Entonces, realmente no tengo una respuesta. Nosotros intentamos guiar, al menos de que la gente sea consciente qué significan las licencias y cuáles son las consecuencias de usar una licencia A o una licencia B. En el, en el caso de los data journals y data sets, es importante saber y reconocer que el dataset debe o puede estar depositado en un repositorio X y ese repositorio tendrá sus eh, guías de, de, de copyright, ¿no? Y el journal tiene que adaptar, o sea, o ser abierto lo suficiente como para aceptar las condiciones del repositorio de datos. Pero sería eso, bueno, no hay realmente una respuesta. Nosotros, de nuevo, seguimos como en conversaciones para ver cómo eh, orientamos ¿no? a los editores. Okay. 